the big reason that I wanted to make this video was because I was wrong. I promise that no matter what I do, I will always keep things authentic, honest, and in my opinion, as close to reality as humanly possible. So in last week, I talked about Road and Track doing their lightning lap, where they talked about how cars were comparable at an as-tested price. I called BS. I said that that was dumb and it was ridiculous because cars are not selling as-tested prices. They are selling for ridiculous markups. And those ridiculous markups are causing these sport cars to be unattainable by everyone in the world. I don't know who's buying these cars for $100,000 markups, but they need to be like, they need to stop or recession needs to hit or people that do that are the worst human beings in the entire world. Anyway, my opinion on it is that dealerships shouldn't do that. And at, over time, what's gonna happen is these dealerships are gonna get phased out as most car companies are gonna go direct to consumer because that's just where the world is going. And it's an unfortunate truth, but it's a truth. So I'm Alex, Alex on Martin with two underscores on Instagram, and I'm coming back to say that people are very upset with me for saying that. I have a couple examples here on what people are really upset with. Number one, people say that, ah, <clears throat> yes, tens of thousands of people thrown to the curb and out of a job because you don't wanna have a dealership. Great plan. I'm not entirely sure why saying that is the immediate like point A, point B. Don't have dealerships, everyone loses their job. He brings up a, a good point because there's a couple people that also said, and they're very upset with me and that's okay. What are we gonna do uh, to work on the cars then? Mom and pop shops aren't capable of repairing the complexities of modern vehicles. How are you gonna test car, test drive the car you want? And you really want the government telling you who you can and cannot buy from. Putrid, that is a good point. And I agree. I think that there should be some sort of element where you can go and experience vehicles, but you don't purchase them from that location. They're experiential locations. They're where you can learn about that sort of stuff. But sales driven performance shops, dealership shops, those sort of places, they incentivize and they almost compound bad negative behavior because dealerships are still the last little bottleneck. They're the last little gatekeeping point between a product and a consumer. And when a lot of these massive dealerships are so closely tied to government regulation, policy, lobbying, things like that, you know there's a lot of greater forces at play. In my opinion, when you open up the market to not just Ford and Chevy and all these companies going direct to consumer, but now you also make it more of an opportunistic landscape for other companies to come into the fray, companies like Alfa Romeo, Tesla, and some smaller companies that might just be jumping into car manufacturing like Rivian, I think it is a good thing to open up the market a little bit more. I still believe that there's an opportunity for dealerships to exist to a point that can support those vehicles, but I don't think they should be okay. And I don't think it should be an all right thing for dealerships to do to charge $100,000 markups on cars. There's another point I do want to say before I jump into it though, that is very, very important. Somebody got mad at me because I was talking smack about Hyundai. They said that uh, they can't take my videos seriously because I constantly shit on individual companies like that. And he's been driving his Hyundai Veloster N for two years, beating the absolute crap out of it as a daily, put 50,000 miles on it. And he said, I make it my mission to take it to 140 miles per hour every time I hit the highway. So for you to say it's a bad brand is absolute BS. And I know quality because I used to drive a Toyota Corolla. First off, don't drive 140 miles per hour every single time on the highway. That's a very dangerous behavior. Second off, Hyundai and Kia, if they're doing good for you, that is great. Hyundai and Kia still have a longevity issue. Their issues aren't just small little tiddly bits here and there. Their issues are engine failures, complete colossal engine failures, requiring millions of recalls to occur on some of their vehicles because they're consistently trying to find the most cost effective way to build a vehicle. Then they market it as a very high quality, high tier, high perceived value product with a lot of things that they take from other car companies companies and they steal them. They steal the design elements, the technology. They take all the things at face value and they put them in their cars and they break after 40,000 miles or they break after 50,000 miles or my experiences that they have. And I don't like that. I don't like car companies that blatantly rip off other car companies that have put in tons of work into their R&D, their development, or their production process to make a good quality product. And sometimes I feel like Hyundai just looks at it, takes it, makes it half as good, make it last half as long, and sell it for a fourth of the price. And we get a lot of times these, these issues. Now there's still a good car. I would still tell you to go buy a Kona N if I didn't think they were getting discontinued. But that doesn't change the fact that that's just what I believe. That's my opinion. You don't have to like it. That's just where I'm at. 
The big reason that I wanted to make this video was because I was wrong. I was wrong about something very, very specifically. And what I was wrong about, what I wanna to talk to you about, is how I determined this sort of pricing thing. If you remember, I mentioned that the cars were getting, gonna get broken down to an inflated price, essentially the actual dealer price of the car. We we're gonna take a look at that. We we're gonna take a look at their time around the track and then we were gonna give it an, a price per second, which made sense on the surface from an Alex Math perspective, which I did say it was Alex Math. Alex's expert opinion advice of value per second. There are a lot of people that said something about that doesn't make sense because and I wanna give shout out to Sebastian Jones. There's another individual that helped me a ton. Um, I have the sheet here and I'll give them credit in the description link below. But what they said was, for cost over time, low cost and slow vehicles will produce the lowest numbers. Instead, a measurement of cost times time makes way more sense, where fast and cheap cars have the smallest numbers. And they did it for me. They gave me a whole new list. Look at that, it's beautiful and ugly. And that's why I know that it's authentic. So we're jumping back into this. When we go back into these cars and we take a look at it, we're looking at base price, as tested price, my adjustment, and then we're taking a look at the final price. So for example, we can run it across the board on the Honda Civic Type R, which had a $25,000 markup on most cars that I saw when I was calling dealerships, which put it at a $71,000 price tag for 315 horsepower. Now, what we ended up doing was we took a look at the average speed around the track so that we could get the dollars over the miles per hour. We then normalized the dollars over the miles per hour, which gives us a very, very small widget number, 0.17. That's gonna give us a value of the average speed around the track in the car that we can then normalize across the entire range of vehicles. What that does is it tells us, based on average speed and the price of the car, what is the best value for the speed? So if we look at it, you know, you look at the, the Honda Civic, the Honda Civic Type R is a 0.17, which makes it the second best value in the entire lineup from a performance perspective. The number one place, even though I hate to admit it, even though I don't wanna tell you guys because it makes me angry that anybody would ever do an $80,000 markup is the Chevrolet Corvette Z06. It takes the first place and best bang for buck that you possibly can. So we've got first place, the Z06. Second place, Honda Civic Type R. Third place went out to the Toyota Supra GR30 manual, which I think is kind of interesting because I think I dogged on that one a little bit more. Number four would be the RS3. But the RS3 that we tested, the only one that was available in the nation that we could find had a buyback program, which means it probably is a reduced cost on this sheet, so I'm not entirely sure that I would trust that. In fifth place, we ended up having the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 RS, which I still think is ridiculous that you can put a $60,000 markup on a Porsche on average. We ended up putting the final uh, price on that one at 246, 246. $6,000. Sixth place though, goes to the Hyundai Kona N. So for the person that was angry with me about me talking poorly about the Kona, you know, be happy, okay? Because following in seventh place was the Elantra N. Eighth place went all the way over to the GR Corolla, which I still think is way out of place. I think when the markups come through, it's gonna be even worse, but hey, the math is the math. CT4 Blackwing in ninth, 10th place goes over to the BMW M240i X Drive. 11th place goes over from a car cost perspective to the M4 CSL. So it's kind of interesting. Both of the Hyundais were right next to each other. Both of the BMWs were right next to each other, which could make you think that there's somebody way smarter with way bigger glasses out there that are pricing these so close together to specifically capture a market. But anyway, that's besides the point. 12th place goes to Subaru WRX. That thing should just get tossed off a cliff. And then the Volkswagen Golf GTI in 13th. 14th is the Lamborghini Huracan Technica, which somehow is still getting beat out by the BMW i4 M5. Here's what I will say. It does not change the fact that dealerships cannot be charging 50, 60, $100,000 markups on cars. I don't think it can be a thing. And the reason that I put a lot of emphasis on car and driver doing something to fix it is because it's not a short term issue. Markups on prices on cars have existed since 2020. That is, we're going on three years now where there's has not been normalized car prices. And it is not 
normal, nor should I think it's okay for automotive journalists to go out there and compare vehicles and call them all perfect and incredible and insane. Not saying car and driver. I think a lot of automotive journalism is trash right now. And for some reason, nobody gets mad at these people for doing that because then they go to the dealership and they figure out that those cars are not the price that they were tested at. They're not even close. And then, oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's not. not. But at, at dealer, at as tested price, Manufacture as tested price, it's $56,000. That's the problem that I have with the entire concept of this. And even when you break it down in terms of value per, per performance, you get the best value per performance in that low level tier that we talked about. The Hyundais, the Volkswagens, the Subarus, the things like that. From a, from a pure speed perspective, the greatest value that you're gonna get is going over into the Corvettes. You look at cars like the uh, GR Supra, and yeah, those are gonna be the best you know, performance oriented value cars in this list. But my issue still remains on the fact that some of this is still askew because when you look at just performance, you're not looking at everything else that comes with the car. The Hyundai Kona N or a car like the Elantra N might be very, very good from a performance perspective, but what's the longevity? And then you start going into this entire rabbit hole thing. So I don't want to do that. And I definitely don't want to further confuse you and confuse myself in the process too, because to be honest, this is a little bit outside of my realm in terms of how we broke this down. Now it makes sense and we'll put the link in the description so you guys can take a look at it. I won't apologize for saying that there's something wrong with how we review new cars right now. I'm not putting the blame solely on Car and Driver, and I'm not putting the blame solely on any automotive journalist, but we need to do a better job at, at calling ourselves out for pretending that everything is perfect and low prices are normal and the market on cars is, is fine and dandy right now, because it's not. And the more we just kind of brush it under the rug, the more these companies that are getting paid an ass load of money to review these cars are gonna continue stuffing bull numbers down your throat and you're not going to be able to know the truth and the truth is over half of these cars had a markup and some of the cars that claim to be the greatest value had the greatest markup from greedy dealerships that don't know any better and they're not getting called out that they're doing anything wrong so they're going to keep doing it and i don't think that that is right. I think that at normal markups, even if you did a small markup, that would make sense. But you were making money before 2020, you're making money now, and the dealerships aren't gonna go away anytime soon if you took the $60,000 markup that you have on a car and maybe brought it down to reality back to 15 or 20, which you would typically see back when cars were in normal demand. But that's just my opinion. So let me know what your thoughts are below. And of course, thank you so much for watching. To Sebastian Jones, to the other individuals, I'll put your names on here for giving me all of this information. Thank you very, very much. I have no problem to admit when I'm wrong, especially with how I do math and things like that. I wanted to just give a number that seemed really simple and easy to follow. Obviously, that wasn't always correct. So there's the information. There's the juice for you. I'm Alex. Alex, I'm Martini with two underscores on Instagram. We will see you later. Adios.